Hi everyone, and welcome to another featurette on Loom. In today's featurette, I wanted to focus on two new features that Loom has added recently. One is their in-video comments, and the other one is the ability to create timestamps in their description field so that you can essentially create chapters in your videos in the same way that you can on YouTube. So first, let's talk about the in-video comments. So once you've created your video and you've sent it off to the party that you want to view it, they can actually respond in doing in-video comments by playing the video. Hey, Cindy. It's and in Edie. fact, let me mute myself. Um, and so you play the video and as the video is going, if there's any part of the video where someone wants to comment, all they would need to do is come down here to this comment button and they would click it. It would automatically uh, pause the video and then you can type in whatever your question is. How did you do this? And you can see that the time is paused at 18 seconds into the video. So you can either click that or hit return and then it will continue to play. When you get to the next portion that you have a question, again, you come down and hit on comment. So let's assume that we're further along here and you have a new question. So you wanna hit it again. So we've paused at four minutes, 11 seconds in, and then you can type in your comment here. I'm hitting return and it's now continuing. Every time I make a comment, you will see a little comment box will appear hovering above the timeline. So as you're playing this back, once you've gotten this back from them, you will see that there were comments at certain specific uh, time coded parts and you can actually just on the time code code hover over it to see what the question is or actually click on it and then you can go down here to where the comments actually are in the in the section below it, which is where it always used to be. And then you can immediately reply to it if you want. So you can do that if you like, and then you'll see that this indicates that two comments have been made at this vantage point. So I think this is actually really, really good and is a great way to not only collaborate if you have to collaborate with someone who is reviewing something, but certainly it enables you to communicate in a different way than traditionally sending a video via email or adding it to the Dropbox and having another entity there. This is happening right here as you get the email and as you're watching the video. So I think that's a really good um, step in the right direction that Loom is doing. They're always updating and improving and I'm always looking forward to this. And just as a side note, um, this is not just available when you say, for example, send it in your Gmail and then the person clicks on the video and then they're able to comment that way. This will happen if you are sending your video through Slack, GitHub, or even if you are embedding your video on your website. So this really works across the board and I think that's pretty impressive. Now, the second thing that you're able to do is say, for example, again, you have created a video. This video is 13 minutes long. Let's say maybe that's not that long and maybe it's a longer video, like a 20 minute video. What you might wanna do is what I usually tell my clients to do when they create long videos for YouTube, which is to create timestamps. And this way the viewer has the option of looking in the description box and seeing what topics might be more interesting to them and then they can jump to that section. And the way that you can do that is down here in description, um, let's say as you're reviewing it or 
in the newer videos above video preferences is going to be your transcription box. So what you could do is you could open up your transcription box and see what the time code is for the different things that you're saying. So um, let's say here was one place that I wanted to input some information. I could put down, I could write my description however I want. So write a description. If I want to change and go to the next line, note that I have to hold the shift and then hit enter in order to go to the next line. So let's say at 325 is point number one, and then I'm going to shift and enter to hit the next stop. And let's say the second is at 711. is point number two and then I can go to the next one and say the next one is at 10 15 is point number three so if this is what we want and then I'll hit return so that you can see it so this underscore makes it a hyperlink so if I wanted to go back to say for example, the first one, you can see that it went back to 325. And then if we want to jump ahead, you can see that it went to 1015. So that's another way that just makes using Loom videos a lot more um, helpful and easy for you to use with your audience. And so this is not something that's just exclusive to YouTube users. This can now actually be something that you can incorporate privately on your videos that you're creating with Loom and then sharing with your specific client or with a group of people. I use a lot of my videos as instructional videos for every single new client that I have come on in an onboarding system. So it's actually for multiple people. It's not just for one specific person. So you can use your videos in that same way as well. And as you know, you can also embed your videos onto your website and use it on Slack. So all of those methods would really work and I think this is really cool. So I just wanted to come in and share this featurette for Loom. Looking forward to seeing more from Loom. And as always, like this video if you think that it was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can see new and improved videos like this coming out every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.